Good afternoon. This is All India Radio and I am Gaurav Dhawan Lal with the Mitte News. The headlines Prime Minister Narendra Modi says government investing heavily in technology and creating modern digital infrastructure Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman emphasizes vibrant villages program aims to ensure facilities like telecom and internet in border villages Pan India coverage of 5G services to be achieved by end of next year says Union Minister Ashwini Vaishnav National Science Day marking the discovery of the Raman effect being celebrated today and Argentina's captain Lionel Messi bags best FIFA football player award Prime Minister Narendra Modi has asserted that the government is investing heavily in technology and creating modern digital infrastructure he said it is also ensuring that the benefits of the digital revolution reach every section of society The Prime Minister said this while addressing a post-budget webinar on the theme Unleashing the Potential Ease of Living Using Technology this morning. The Prime Minister said every budget in the last few years has stressed on the ease of living for people with the help of technology. He emphasized that in this year's union budget priority has been given to technology with a human touch. नेशनल साइंस डे पर हो रहे आज के बजट वेबिनार का विषय बहुत ही महत्वपूर्ण है 21वीं सदी का बदलता हुआ भारत अपने नागरिकों को टेक्नोलॉजी की ताकत से लगातार नागरिकों को एम्पावर कर रहा है बीते वर्षों में हमारी सरकार के हर बजट में टेक्नोलॉजी की मदद से देशवासियों की ईज ऑफ लिविंग बढ़ाने पर जोर दिया गया है इस बार के बजट में भी टेक्नोलॉजी लेकिन साथ-साथ ह्यूमन टच को प्राथमिकता ये हमारा प्रयास रहा है highlighting the contradictions in the priorities of the previous governments the prime minister recalled how a particular section of people always looked for government intervention and expected it to do good for the people he said that their entire life was spent in the absence of these facilities the prime minister added that the changing india of the 21st century is empowering its citizens continuously with the power of technology and people are clearly feeling this change आज सरकार की नीतियां और निर्णयों का सकारात्मक प्रभाव हर उस जगह देखने को लगा है जिसकी सबसे ज्यादा जरूरत है हमारा प्रयास हर गरीब और वंचित के जीवन को आसान बना रहा है उनकी ईज ऑफ लिविंग बढ़ा रहा है लोगों के जीवन में सरकार का दखल और दबाव भी कम हो रहा है आज लोग सरकार को रास्ते की रुकावट नहीं मानते हैं बल्कि लोग हमारी सरकार को नए अवसरों के कैटालिस्ट के तौर पर देखते हैं साइटिंग एग्जांपल्स ऑफ वन नेशन वन राशन कार्ड एंड द जन धन आधार मोबाइल ट्रिनिटी आरोग्य सेतु एंड कोविन ऐप रेलवे रिजर्वेशन एंड कॉमन सर्विस सेंटर्स द प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेड दीज डिसीजंस हैव एनहांस्ड द ईज ऑफ लिविंग National Science Day is being celebrated across the country today. The theme of this year's Science Day is Global Science for Global Well-being in the light of India's G20 presidency. Prime Minister Narendra Modi extended his greetings to all scientists and innovators in the country. In a tweet, the Prime Minister said, "India is making innumerable strides in the world of science and nurturing an ecosystem for research and innovation." Here is more in this desk report. National Science Day is celebrated to mark the discovery of the Raman effect by physicist Sir C. V. Raman on this day in 1928. For this discovery, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1930. In 1954, he was honored with India's highest civilian award, the Bharat Ratna. In 1986, the National Council for Science and Technology asked the government of India to designate February 28 as National Science Day. Since 1987, the event is celebrated all over the country in schools, colleges, universities, and other academic. scientific technical medical and research institutions the celebration includes public speeches radio tv science movies science exhibitions research demonstrations debates and many more activities payal sharma news desk union minister of finance and corporate affairs nirmala sitaraman has said that under prime minister narendra modi 
every institution reflects the government's policy of sabka saath sabka vikas the finance minister was speaking at an outreach program organized by nabard and other banks at chintan bhavan gangtok today under the government of india with prime minister modi every institution reflects the policy of the government and that policy is sabka saath sabka vikas it is not just for things around delhi or big metropolitan cities like mumbai or hyderabad or bengaluru nabard moves to villages which are even in the far flung areas speaking about the vibrant villages program the minister said that the aim is to ensure development of all common facilities such as telecom infrastructure schools internet and common service centers in border villages the finance minister highlighted the budgetary support in creating livelihood and promoting entrepreneurship appreciating the large presence of women entrepreneurs at the program ms sita raman shared the budgetary provision for providing supporting women shgs in marketing branding and professionally operating their businesses more from our correspondent bhale dunga ropeway project constructed at a cost of around rupees 209 crores with a gap funding of around rupees 57 crores under the prime minister's development initiative for northeast region the minister also laid the foundation stone for the mini secretariat project in lumse gangtok the ropeway project is aimed at boosting sustainable tourism while the mini secretariat project would decongest gangtok the finance minister also presented sanction letters under various schemes of nabard for nine projects and distributed loans to beneficiaries of central government schemes during the program earlier she flagged off sikkim's first solar powered mobile atm van and visited stalls set up by nabard beneficiaries at mg mark gangtok later today the minister will attend a public interaction program in lachen in mangan district with dilinan dulal saikat sarkar from gangtok for air the government has said the pan india coverage target of 5g services will be achieved by the end of next year Briefing the media in the national capital, Communication and IT Minister Ashwini Vaishnav said 387 districts of the country have been covered by 5G services so far. He said under phase 1 of 5G coverage, a deadline was set to cover 200 cities by the end of March this year and the target has been achieved a month before. He said India has emerged as a leading manufacturer and exporter of telecom equipment and the mobile export is going to be 10 billion dollars in the coming years. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at the rate AIR News Alerts. In the Kashmir Valley, two terrorists have been gunned down by security forces in an encounter which began in the wee hours today at Padgampora village of Avantipura in Pulwama district. According to police, a joint team of army, CRPF and JNK police launched a cordon and search operation after credible inputs about the presence of some terrorists in the area. As the team approached the suspected spot, the hiding terrorists fired upon the security forces, triggering an encounter. Police in a tweet said one of the terrorists neutralized in the encounter in the early hours today has been identified as Akib Mushtaq Bhatt. He was an A category terrorist and involved in the killing of a Kashmiri pandit Sanjay Sharma 2 days ago at Achan village of Pulwama district. Akib initially worked for Hizbul Mujahideen and nowadays was working with the resistance front and off shoot shoot of Lashkar-e Toiba. External Affairs Minister Dr S J Shankar has said that the India European Union free trade agreement FTA will be a game changer for the India EU relationship he said India is looking forward to mutually beneficial and advantageous conclusion of the negotiation process within a short time line speaking at the India EU Business and Sustainability Conclave in New Delhi today the external affairs minister termed the European Union an important trade partner saying that India and the EU believe in multipolar global order and share their commitment to promoting multilateralism he said India and the EU are considerate to each other's geopolitical economic strategic and security concerns he added that the EU is one of India's largest and important trade partners and bilateral trade has crossed 150 billion US dollars 
external affairs minister dr s j shankar met his danish counterpart lars loke rasmussen in new delhi today and discussed the bilateral partnership in a tweet the minister said they discussed the bilateral partnership that is growing from strength to strength he added that they also exchanged views on the state of the world and that it calls for intensifying cooperation Union Environment Minister Bhupender Yadav has said that India and Denmark can show the world that delivering an ambitious climate and sustainable energy goal is possible. He was addressing the India Denmark Partners for Green and Sustainable Progress Conference in New Delhi today. He said the Indo-Danish Green Strategic Partnership is an appropriate forum to exchange ideas, knowledge, technology and capacity building to promote sustainable lifestyles. The minister said that since the launch of the partnership in 2020, the bilateral cooperation is focused on promoting green and sustainable development. The Privileges Committee of the Rajya Sabha has sought an explanation from 13 opposition MPs for disrupting the proceedings of the House during the recently concluded first leg of the budget session. Sources said the MPs also include Congress member Rajni Patil, who was suspended for recording a video of the proceedings. Earlier, Rajya Sabha Chairman Jagdeep Thankar had referred the matter against 12 opposition MPs to the Committee for Investigation and Reporting. The committee was asked to investigate the alleged breach of privilege by the MPs for persistently and willfully obstructing the proceedings of the House. The Rajya Sabha Bulletin had highlighted that these MPs had violated the rules and etiquette of the House. he said they were repeatedly entering the well of the house shouting slogans persistently and willfully obstructing the proceedings and compelling the chair to adjourn the house the opposition parties held protests during the session over the adani group issue the suspension of congress mps and other matters prime minister narendra modi has paid tribute to former prime minister morarji desai on his birth anniversary today the prime minister said in a tweet that morarji bhai desai is remembered for his contribution to india's freedom struggle and as an outstanding administrator the prime minister said his role in resisting the emergency and steering the nation in the period after that is also exemplary the indian naval ship ins sukanya arrived in the port of colombo of Sri Lanka yesterday on an official visit the 101 meter long offshore patrol vessel along with 106 crew members was welcomed by the Sri Lankan navy commanding officer commander pranavanan called on western naval area commander rear admiral suresh de silva at the Sri Lankan western naval command headquarters school supplies donated by the indian navy were also handed over to a group of children of the i the aki to kulunta primary school in gal the crew of the ship will participate in several programs to promote cooperation between the navies of both the countries ins sukanya will depart from the island tomorrow argentine captain lionel messi has been named the best player in men's football by fifa at the best fifa football awards in paris yesterday messi won this award for his outstanding performances in men's football from August 2021 to December 2022 the 35 year old forward scored two goals in the final against France France's Kylian Mbappe also nominated for the highly anticipated award of the night netted a hat trick in the World Cup final in cricket the third test between india and australia of the border gavaskar trophy will begin in indore tomorrow india have retained the trophy winning the first two tests Despite the loss, Australia are currently topping the WTC points table with 136 points, while India placed second with 123 points. The fourth test will be played at the Narendra Modi Stadium in Hyderabad from the 9th to the 13th of March. And now before we close the headlines once again, Prime Minister Narendra Modi says government investing heavily in technology and creating modern digital infrastructure. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman emphasizes vibrant villages program aims to ensure facilities like telecom and internet in border villages. Pan India coverage of 5G services to be achieved by end of next year says Union Minister Ashwini Vaishnav. National Science Day marking the discovery of the Raman effect being celebrated today and 
Argentine captain Lionel Messi bags Best FIFA Football Player Award. For details of these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.gov.in. And with that, we end the midday news.